Hi, and thank you for joining me. I will be doing my presentation on the Dishtyle movement. After reviewing some works, these are the characteristics that I um, compiled um, that I noticed reoccurring in multiple works. So one of that is that it's a simplified composition and there's not a whole lot of detail in it. Uh, there are obviously straight and hor uh, vertical and horizontal lines that um, create rectilinear um, shapes. Also the use of primary colors um, and neutrals such as blacks and grays and whites. Um, and then also these works are all asymmetrical. So of course the first work uh, that I had to include was Amondrian because he was a prominent figure um, and influencer in the de style movement. Uh, of course we can see that this work has the square forms as well as the um, primary colors of blue and yellow and red um, as well as the black vertical and horizontal lines that we saw in our example photo from the last slide. This is another work by Mondrian, kind of because it shows it. Um, the other one was more of like a large scale rectilinear shapes, and this one includes kind of um, smaller scale um, rectilinear shapes, maybe halved uh, shapes of like other forms that occur in the work. So, uh, and again, we can see that there's the use of the neutral colors along with only primary colors. Going a bit of a little different direction here, we have the Composition 7, The Three Graces by Theo van Doesburg, painted in 1917. Uh, though this painting includes primary colors that are a little more muted, or what I would call soft, um, as well as the neutrals are uh, more of an off-white rather than a gray or a stark white. Um, and so this is really different, as well as the linear, uh, more slim rectangles rather than squared or um, kind of a wide rectangle. You can really tell that this piece is uh, very deconstructed and of something of a whole. I found this work by Fritz Glarner uh, very interesting because it uh, is actually, it doesn't use a whole lot of black as we've seen in the other uh, or the previous works. Uh, and it's not perfectly symmetrical rectilinear forms. So the forms that are created here, like if you were to cut them in half, one end would be more narrow than the other. Uh, also, we might want to note that this was actually created in 1957. So though it's in the um, distyle uh, kind of form or uh, style, uh, it's actually quite later than whenever the de style movement was actually occurring. So this Still Life Bowl with Apples by Bart van Vanderlick uh, is one that I thought is kind of interesting and you may notice that it is also kind of an earlier work. So I, I think that this style really started out as breaking down the like objects and making them more and more deconstructed over time. And so obviously we can kind of tell that this was probably a bowl with some apples in it, but they've been broken down to like their basic geometric forms and there's no detail and there's no um, light coming to give this any sort of emotion or any sort of shadows. So after reviewing a few works, I made some initial observations and as well as some assumptions. Uh, these paintings were all created nearing the end or after World War I. And so attached over here, I have a timeline so uh, we could go back and reference, you know, a lot of these paintings, um, especially the aforementioned uh, Still Life was created two years after the end of the war. Uh, and this is, um, I kind of thought that it would be used to distance the notion of individuality. Um, because there is no message portrayed in the work and through um, the actual details itself. There's no way to interpret it. After doing some research, I realized that I really wasn't too far off from my assumption and observation. 
So this was a response to the chaotic trauma of World War I, uh, kind of a return to order uh, movement, trying to reunite and uh, kind of rid the separation that was created during the war. So it really wanted to reject any sort of decorative tendencies that occurred pre-war uh, because they felt that that pulled people apart based on um, their hierarchy in the world, whether they were poor or rich. So this was kind of an attempt to create a utopian society, which we can see um, in this work by Le Corbusier, um, which was actually in a video that we had watched in this course this week. Um, so this might look familiar, but it was, it was to create something universal. So de Stijl really did have a lasting legacy. Uh, we can see it mostly in the architecture of the international style led by Le Corbusier, um, as well as we can see it in modern organization, like the Microsoft grid here on the right. Uh, it's very clearly laid out in the rectilinear form. Uh, we might also want to mention that the de Stijl kind of led to the what um, fired the World War II, the idea that everyone had to be the same. So uh, it, it, though it was a good idea and a good attempt, it didn't really turn out the best. And these are my sources. Thank you for watching.